In the last section, we created our timer tray subclass inside of this new file. We extended the tray base class, and then we just got equivalent functionality working. So inside of timer tray, we defined the constructor, which received the icon path. The constructor immediately turned around and called super with the icon path. Remember that super right here is a reference to the trays constructor. So the tray has some, presumably it has some configuration inside of it, inside the constructor. So we wanna make sure that all that configuration still occurs. So we called super and passed in the icon path. This code right here essentially is completely identical to what the tray was already doing before. We have added no further customization, no further setup to this thing whatsoever. We're now going to continue by implementing an on-click method on the timer tray. So the entire idea behind making this timer tray subclass, remember, was to clean up the code inside of our index.js file. So I want to make sure that that click event handler that we're currently setting up inside of the index.js file, I want to move all that logic over to the timer tray inside of a method that we're going to call on click. So back inside of my timer tray subclass, the first thing I want to do is set up the on click event handler itself. So inside the constructor, I'm going to say the instant that we make a timer tray instance, like the second we call new timer tray, I want to set up the click event handler. So I'm going to say this dot on click, this dot on click, like so. Okay, so now you're probably thinking, Stephen, where is this code coming from? This is madness. This is insanity. What's going on? Hey, bear with me. All right, bear with me. So let's go back over to the index.js file. So here's index.js. Over here, we had previously been creating the new instance of the tray and then calling tray.on. So clearly, the tray instance, the tray variable, the tray object has this dot on function. The dot on function is provided by the tray subclass. So remember that whenever we extend a base class, the new class that we get out of it, so timer tray, has access to all the different functions that exist on the tray. So inside of here, we can call this dot on. That is referring to the dot on function or the dot on method provided by the tray base class. So we're saying whenever a user or excuse me, whenever the click event handler or whenever the click event is triggered, run the method this.onClick. So inside of here, we'll define on click like so. Okay, so baby steps here, baby steps. We're just making very small amounts of progress. So this on click function will be executed whenever the click event occurs. Remember that any click event, ha click event handler that we create will be called with the event and bounds objects. So now we can move over, here's event and bounds. So this is the function that we were executing before. We can now move over all of this functionality that had been defined inside of this index.js file. So I'm gonna start at the very top of the arrow function. I'm gonna to select to everything down to the bottom of the arrow function. So here's the closing brace for the if statement. I'm gonna cut all this out. I'm gonna move it all over to the timer tray. I'm gonna paste it inside of on click. Okay, now last step, I'm gonna go back over to the index.js file. I'm going to delete the entire click event handler that we were setting up before. So that step right there was probably another big leap of faith. That was probably another very confusing step. Let's talk about exactly what we did. We were previously creating a new instance of the tray and setting it equal to the tray variable right here. And then we set up a click event handler on the tray immediately after. We're now setting up the exact same click event handler, but we're doing so inside of the timer tray subclass. So the instant that we create a timer tray instance, the constructor function will be created and we immediately set up an on click handler inside of there. So whenever a user clicks on this timer tray, we will run the onClick method, which is defined right here. Now, two little gotchas inside of here, two little gotchas. The first gotcha is that we are passing an event handler, which is going to make reference to this. Essentially, long story short, take a leap of faith here with me. We're going to bind the context of this thing by saying dot bind this. 
The next thing I want to point out to you is that inside of the on-click handler, we are referencing main window inside of here, main window all over the place. But this timer trace subclass doesn't have any idea what the main window is. So when we create the main window, we need to make sure that we pass along a reference to the main window. So back inside of index.js, we're going to pass along the main window as an additional argument to the timer tray when it gets created. So then inside of the timer tray, we can receive that reference to the main window and we will assign it as an instance property equals main window like so. So now inside of on click, we can reference everywhere that we say main window will become this dot main window. So this dot main window, this dot main window, this dot main window. Now I can tell you right now that when we run our code in just a second, if you get an error message that says something like, hey, have no idea what variable main window is, that means that you forgot one of the this dot statements inside of there. Okay, so believe it or not, we're now ready for another test of our application. We have completed the refactor. Let's restart our application at the command line. Oops, not what I wanted to run. NPM run electron. Now our timer is going to start back up because we created an instance of the timer tray. So we already had that functionality. Everything was working correctly before. However, this time, when we set up the constructor function or when the constructor function was called, we immediately set up the click event handler. So this time when we click on this thing, it's going to call this on click method that is contained within the timer tray. So let's click on the thing and yes, it still works. It still works as it worked before. Fantastic. So that pretty much completes the refactor that we have to do. If this looked like just total madness and you're just sitting there like, my gosh, Steven, why did we do this? This seems crazy. Everything was going so well and now I feel completely lost. Hey, don't sweat it. We're going to do this same exact timer tray thing, this same exact subclassing thing several more times throughout the course. And so you'll get a lot more exposure to what is going on here. One thing I want to say about this refactor that we just did, I really suspect that if we had started out the entire course writing our code in this fashion, you probably would have said, okay, yeah, this seems like totally reasonable. Like I totally understand what's going on here. No problem whatsoever. I really expect that if we had started this way, you would have had not had no issue whatsoever. And it's probably just the fact that we did the refactor that this might seem a little bit confusing. So anyways, the refactor is complete. All of the code having to do with the timer tray now lives inside of this timer tray file. And we were able to dramatically simplify the amount of code inside of our index.js file. So now the index.js doesn't have to worry about the internal implementation, excuse me, the internal implementation of the timer tray. All that logic sits inside of the timer tray file instead. Now, the last thing we can do over here, we are not using the reference to tray anymore. So we can clean that up and up a little bit with the tray declaration with the let ray we can or let tray excuse me we can delete that as well so yes this has certainly cleaned up a lot of the code related to the timer tray oh all right so nasty refactor but it's all out of the way let's continue with our application in the next section